John Bennett Ramsey, six-year-old pageant performer, struck dead and asphyxiated in her family home in Boulder, Colorado. A shocking case that snared the attention of a nation and the world surrounding. To this day, no one has been convicted for the murder of someone who had barely begun to understand what school was. If that wasn't enough, we'll also be dissecting the gross mishandling of the crime scene by investigators and the ominous dark cloud of potential guilt that surrounds the Ramsey family. Was the heinous act performed by an outside intruder, as stated by a retired high-ranking police officer called to action, or did it go how 99% of researchers suggest that the Ramsey family did it? Sit back and relax, dear viewer, as we analyze one of the most heartbreaking murders of John Bennett Ramsey. The Ramsey family, consisting of John Ramsey, Ramsey, Patsy Ramsey and their children, including John Bennett, lived an affluent lifestyle in Boulder, Colorado. John Ramsey, the patriarch, was a successful businessman who had built a multi-million dollar company called Access Graphics, a computer services company that he eventually sold to Lockheed Martin. Patsy Ramsey, the matriarch, was actively involved in the local social scene and held a prominent position within the community. The Ramseys enjoyed the benefits of their wealth, living in a spacious and luxurious home known as the Ramsey Mansion. The house was situated in an upscale neighborhood and featured extensive grounds, multiple bedrooms, and various amenities. Their residence became a symbol of their status and prosperity within the community. One significant aspect of the Ramsey family's lifestyle was John Bennett's involvement in child beauty pageants. John Bennett, at a young age, began participating in these competitions, showcasing her talent and beauty on stage. Her performances were marked by extravagant costumes, elaborate makeup, and high highly choreographed routines. She quickly gained attention and recognition in the child beauty pageant circuit, becoming a rising star in the industry at a record rate. The Ramsey family dedicated considerable time, effort, and financial resources to support John Bennett's pageant suits. They would travel to different cities to attend competitions, invest in expensive costumes and accessories, and hire coaches to enhance John Bennett's skills. These pageants became a central part of their lives and added to the perception of the family's opulence lifestyle. However, the Ramsey family's involvement in child beauty pageants also attracted controversy and criticism from various quarters. Some argued that these competitions placed undue pressure on young children and encouraged the objectification of girls. The Ramseys faced public scrutiny and had to defend their decision to allow John Bennett's participation in these events. Despite the controversy surrounding the beauty pageant world, the Ramsey family maintained a close-knit dynamic and presented a picture of a happy and loving unit. They were actively involved in the Boulder community and participated in charity events and social gatherings. Both John and Patsy Ramsey were well regarded and respected members of society. Burke Ramsey is the older brother of John Bennett, born on January 27, 1987. Burke was nine years old at the time of his sister's murder in 1996. Following the tragedy, Burke's life became intricately entwined with the investigation and subsequent media scrutiny. During the investigation, Burke was initially shielded from public attention and his parents tried to protect him from the media frenzy surrounding John Bennett's murder. However, as the case gained more attention, Burke's name and image became widely known. Burke was questioned by investigators and the media about the events leading up to John Bennett's murder, as well as the dynamics within the Ramsey family. His statements and behavior were closely examined by both the public and law enforcement. Various theories emerged during the investigation, including the possibility of family involvement in John Bennett's murder. As a result, Burke came under scrutiny, with some speculation about his potential role in the crime. Questions arose regarding his relationship with John Bennett, any sibling rivalry or conflicts, and his whereabouts on the night of the murder. We have more on Burke later in the video. In 1998, a grand jury voted to indict both John and Patsy Ramsey on charges of child abuse resulting in death and accessory to a crime. However, the district attorney decided not to proceed with the charges, citing a lack of sufficient evidence. Throughout the years, Burke has largely remained out of the public eye, living a private life away from the media spotlight. He completed his education and pursued various professional endeavors, including a career in the field of computer systems. Burke has seldom
seldom granted interviews or made public statements about his sister's murder, preferring to maintain his privacy. In recent years, Berg appeared in several high-profile interviews, including a three-part television series in 2016, in which he shared his perspective on the case, as well as an appearance on Dr. Phil, sparking analysis into Berg's body language. He denied any and all involvement in John Bennett's murder and expressed his frustration with the persistent accusations directed towards him and his family. Berg's involvement in the case continues to be a subject of intrigue and speculation, with opinions varying among those who have closely followed the investigation. The exact role he played in the events surrounding John Bennett's murder remains a mystery, and the case remains unsolved as of now, 2023. The Christmas season held particular significance for the Ramses. They celebrated the holiday with great enthusiasm and hosted elaborate parties at their home. The Ramsey mansion would be adorned with extravagant decorations, and the family would create a festive atmosphere filled with joy and merriment. The stark contrast between the Ramsey's privileged lifestyle and the tragic events that unfolded on December 26, 1996 was almost unheard of among the community. The shock and disbelief that swept through Boulder was palpable, as the picture-perfect image of the Ramsey family collided with the grim reality of John Bennett's murder. People began to wonder, what kind of people are the Ramsey family really like? The investigation into her death would uncover complexities within the Ramsey family and challenge the public's perception of their idyllic lifestyle. Furthermore, scrutiny and questions would also fall upon the shoulders of the investigating party. The murder of John Bennett in 1996 captivated the nation and triggered an extensive investigation that would span over two decades. From the early stages, the case was plagued by controversy, flawed procedures, and a media frenzy that would shape public opinion. Let's explore the investigation, examining the early theories that the flawed police investigation, the various pieces of evidence, and the emergence of the intruder theory and family involvement theory. In the immediate aftermath of John Bennett's discovery in the Ramsey family's basement on December 26, 1996, suspicions quickly emerged, often focused on family members. Due to the lack of obvious signs of forced entry, some speculated that the murder had to be an inside job. John and Patsy Ramsey, John Bennett's parents, were particularly under scrutiny. The theory suggested that they may have accidentally caused John Bennett's death and stage the crime scene to look like an intruder was responsible. However, it's important to note that the family would often leave the majority of windows open throughout the night, including the basement, creating another layer of complexity for the investigation. This early theory gained traction due to perceived inconsistencies in the Ramsey family's accounts and their unusual circumstances surrounding the case. Critics pointed to Patsy Ramsey's 911 call, in which some believe they detected signs of deception. According to the 911 operator who spoke with Patsy, the call seemed rehearsed, which points to deception as most liars often rehearse their lies. Can you spot a liar, dear viewer? Let us know how you know a liar when you see one in the comments. With the advent of modern technology, investigators of recent years have found hard evidence of multiple voices on the 911 call. Investigators can allegedly hear Mr. Ramsey saying, We're not speaking to you. Before Mrs. Ramsey allegedly asks, What did you do? Help me, Jesus. Buck can then be heard saying, What did you find? Considering Patsy had previously stated that Burke had been asleep all night and all morning, this would be the first of many statements made by the Ramsey family that would be looked upon with doubt. What's going on there, man? We have a kidnapping. Sorry, right, please. Explain to me what's going on, okay? Sir, we have a... There's a nut left in our car. Who's going? Additionally, questions arose about the family's behavior in the hours following the murder, as some felt their actions were not consistent with those of grieving parents. The investigation took a turbulent turn early on. The initial response by the Boulder Police Department was marred by mishandling of the crime scene. Officers failed to secure the scene properly, allowing friends and family members to freely move about the house, potentially contaminating evidence. Crucial mistakes were made, such as failing to thoroughly search the entire house during the initial sweep. The police were not the first to discover John Bennett in the basement. It was John who first found her. At one point, the family and investigation led a cleaner into the property, further redacting any possibility of further evidence discoverable when examining the house. The mishandling of the crime scene and other procedural errors tainted the evidence collected, making it difficult to establish a clear chain of custody and potentially compromising crucial forensic information. This mishandling opened the door to allegations of a cover-up or incompetence, adding further complexity to an already intricate case. 
As news of John Bennett's murder spread, the media descended upon Boulder, turning the case into a sensationalized spectacle. The intense media coverage created an atmosphere of speculation and suspicion. The Ramses found themselves under the glaring spotlight, facing relentless scrutiny and public judgment. The media frenzy stoked public opinion and heavily influenced the trajectory of the investigation. The media's intense focus on the case and the Ramses had both positive and negative consequences. On one hand, it brought attention to the case and generated potential leads and tips. On the other hand, the constant media scrutiny created an environment where speculation and rumor overshadowed factual information. The relentless coverage turned the case into a media circus, distorting the public perception and hindering the objective pursuit of truth. For a perpetrator, blurred, distorted lines are much easier to hide behind. Numerous pieces of evidence were central to the case. One notable item was the ransom note found in the Ramsey home, demanding a substantial sum of money. The note's length and specific details raised questions about its authenticity. Some experts believe that the note would have been written by someone with close knowledge of the family. The ransom note, along with other physical evidence, became a crucial puzzle piece for investigators. Specific information such as the $118,000 ransom rose suspicion as that was the exact bonus John had received just a few months prior. How would a random intruder know this specific financial information? The ransom note itself became a subject of analysis and speculation. Handwriting experts examined its composition and compared it to known samples, but definitive conclusions proved elusive. The note's authorship remained a source of controversy, with some arguing it was staged to misdirect the investigation. Some argue that the note was written by Patsy herself to shift blame from any of the family members. Another piece of evidence that gained attention was the presence of a garrote around John Bennett's neck. A garrote is a device used to strangle or control a person. Its presence suggested a level of premeditation and intent beyond a simple accident. The discovery of a bowl of pineapple in the kitchen with John Bennett's DNA led to speculation about a potential altercation or family dynamics that night. The garrote and the presence of pineapple in John Bennett's digestive tract were analyzed in an attempt to piece together the events leading to her death. Forensic experts sought to determine the significance of these findings and establish a timeline of events. The garot suggested a level of planning and intentionality. While the presence of pineapple raised questions about a potential confrontation or interaction involving John Bennett before her death, two main theories emerged during the investigation. The intruder theory and the family involvement theory. The intruder theory poised that an unknown assailant had entered the Ramsey home and committed the crime. Supporters of this theory pointed to the lack of forced entry and suggested that an intruder may have had inside knowledge of the house's layout. They believed that the police focused too heavily on the Ramseys and failed to explore other leads adequately. The intruder theory gained traction due to evidence and appeared to challenge the notion of family involvement. Some pointed to unidentified DNA found at the crime scene, suggesting the presence of an unknown third party. Additionally, the theory highlighted the potential vulnerabilities in the house's security and the possibility of an intruder taking advantage of those weaknesses. On the other hand, the family involvement theory suggested that someone within the Ramsey family was responsible for John Bennett's murder. Critics pointed to suspicious behavior, inconsistencies in the Ramsey's accounts, and the circumstantial evidence surrounding the crime. The theory argued that the Ramseys may have staged this scene to protect themselves or to divert attention from the actual perpetrator. A significant contributing factor to this theory was the family's almost immediate acquisition of legal support following their daughter's death. Would your lawyer be the first person you would call? Supporters of the family involvement theory would believe that the ransom note and other aspects of the case pointed to an inside job. They argued that the Ramsey's behavior and statements appeared suspicious and that evidence, though circumstantial, painted a compelling picture of potential familial culpability. The investigation continued to unfold, but a resolution remained elusive. Frustrations grew as the case reached a stalemate, with no arrests or conclusive findings. The public's thirst for justice went unquenched, and debates regarding the guilt or innocence of the Ramseys raged on. In recent years, advancements in forensic technology have led to renewed efforts in the investigation, retesting of evidence, and re-examination of theories. The primary suspects in the John Bennett Ramsey case were John and Patsy Ramsey, the parents of this slain six-year-old beauty queen. As the investigation unfolded, media scrutiny
scrutiny and the pressure put on the family intensified. With no other suspects brought to light due to a lack of evidence, except for one unfamiliar footprint left outside the home near the basement, all eyes were on the Ramses. The media rumbled. Surrounding the case placed immense pressure on the Ramses. The intense scrutiny and public judgment took a toll on their personal lives and further complicated the investigation. The media's relentless coverage bolstered speculation and painted the Ramses as suspicious figures in the eyes of the public. The media focused on various aspects of the case, including the behavior of the Ramses and inconsistencies in their statements. Their actions in the aftermath of the murder, such as allowing friends into the house and participating in media interviews, were scrutinized and criticized. Some believed that their behavior was not consistent with that of grieving parents and raised doubts about their involvement. Would a dinner party be appropriate if your daughter died, dear viewer? Supporters of the family involvement theory pointed to several key pieces of evidence and argued to bolster their case. The ransom note. The lengthy and specific ransom note found in the Ramsey home raised suspicions. Critics argued that the note appeared to be carefully constructed and possibly staged, suggesting the involvement of someone close to the family. The note's language and content were analyzed for similarities to known samples, but definitive conclusions proved elusive. Prior incidents. Some argued that prior incidents involving the Ramseys hinted at a potential pattern of deception or cover-up. They pointed to an alleged history of John Ramsey being involved in financial controversies and Patsy Ramsey patient aspirations for John Bennett. These incidents, combined with the circumstances of John Bennett's murder, were seen as potential motives for family involvement. Inconsistencies in statements. Critics claimed that John and Patsy Ramsey provided inconsistent statements to the law, enforcement, and the media, raising doubts about their credibility. Discrepancies in their accounts coupled with perceived evasiveness or defensiveness, raise suspicions about their potential role in the crime. Contamination of the crime scene. The mishandling of the crime scene by both the police and the Ramses themselves raised questions about the integrity of the evidence. Critics argued that the contamination of the crime scene could have been a deliberate attempt to tamper with evidence or stage the scene to misdirect the investigation. On the other hand, it is always possible that these were but a series of coincidences that given their timing were scrutinized. It it is easy to do so when there are no other suspects involved. The intruder theory posits that an unknown assailant entered the Ramsey home and committed the crime, while the family involvement theory suggests that someone within the Ramsey family was responsible. The intruder theory contrasts the evidence of family involvement in several ways. Lack of forced entry. Supporters of the intruder theory emphasized the absence of signs of forced entry, suggesting that an unknown intruder had intimate knowledge of the house's layout and security systems. They argue that this supports the notion of an outside perpetrator rather than someone within the family. Unidentified DNA Unknown DNA found at the crime scene has been a point of contention. Proponents of the intruder theory contend that the presence of unidentified DNA supports the possibility of an unknown assailant being involved. They argue that the DNA evidence cannot be dismissed and should be further investigated. Staging the crime scene. Supporters of the intruder theory question the feasibility of the Ramses staging the crime scene to mislead investigators. They argue that staging the crime scene to resemble an intruder's work would require an intricate plan and exceptional act skills, making it unlikely for the parents to have executed it convincingly. Alternative suspects. The intruder theory proponents point out that focusing solely on the Ramses may have hindered the investigation from exploring other potential suspects. They argue that the narrow focus on the family may have overlooked crucial leads and evidence that could have led to the identification of an intruder. With these points in mind, let's take a look at some of the developments in the case from the past few years and how things have changed for the investigation and the family. Advancements in forensic technology have the potential to significantly impact the investigation into the murder of John Bennett Ramsey and address some of the lingering controversies surrounding the case. Over the years, new scientific techniques and tools have emerged, offering possibilities for re-examining evidence, retesting samples, and potentially uncovering new information. One of the most significant advancements in forensic technology is the development of DNA analysis techniques. Since the initial investigation in the late 1990s, DNA analysis has become more sophisticated and precise. With the introduction of methods like STR, or short tandem repeat analysis and mitochondrial DNA analysis, smaller DNA samples can now be used to obtain reliable results. In the case of John Bennett Ramsey, the presence of unidentified DNA at the crime scene has been a point of contention. Advancements in DNA analysis may allow for the retesting of these samples using more sensitive techniques. 
Comparisons of the unidentified DNA to larger databases create a chance of identifying potential suspects or determining if the DNA belongs to an unrelated individual. Touch DNA analysis is another advancement that could be beneficial to the investigation. This technique enables the extraction of DNA from skin cells left behind through casual contact. It can be particularly useful in cases where only small, degraded, or mixed DNA samples are available. Revisiting the evidence from John Bennett's clothing, the garrote, or other items collected from the crime scene using touch DNA analysis could yield valuable results. It may help identify the touch DNA profiles of individuals who had direct contact with the evidence, potentially shedding light on the events surrounding the murder. While fingerprint analysis is not a new technique, developments in imaging and enhancement technologies have improved its accuracy and reliability. Re-examining the evidence for latent fingerprints and utilizing state-of-the-art fingerprint analysis methods may help identify previously undetected prints and potentially match them to known individuals. In the John Bennett Ramsey case, analyzing fingerprints on items found at the crime scene or re-evaluating existing prints could provide additional clues or rule out potential suspects. It is important to note that fingerprints may not be as reliable in a household setting due to the presence of family members, friends, and relatives skewing the results. Improvement in digital forensics have revolutionized the field of crime investigation. In the digital age, examining electronic devices such as computers, smartphones, and digital cameras can provide crucial insights into a crime. Revisiting the digital evidence in the Ramsey case could involve analyzing the contents of the family's computers, examining deleted files or communications, and reconstructing the online activities of the family members and potential suspects. This could help identify any overlooked digital footprints or uncover hidden information that may have been missed during the original investigation. Despite the potential impact of these advancements in forensic technology, it's important to manage expectations. Forensic evidence alone may not provide a definitive answer to the many lingering controversies surrounding the case. It should be considered alongside other pieces of evidence, witness testimonies, and investigative findings to build a comprehensive understanding of the crime. An interview conducted by 60 Minutes Australia sheds light on John Ramsey, continuing his search for truth following a discovery in 2022, almost 30 years on. The District Attorney of Colorado recently apologized to John and the late Patsy Ramsey, finally breaking down the first barrier to John's struggle to find the person responsible for the death of his daughter. The discovery in question turned out to be a DNA from a male found on John Bennett's clothes. The interview also highlights the distinct mishandling of evidence and unreliable investigation techniques that litter this tragic story. Various DNA with different techniques are exploring genealogy technology similar to an ancestry discovery website. Another company believes that the untested samples may exist in a database somewhere in the world. John approached the detectives and asked for assistance in the form of releasing the article of clothing with an unknown DNA sample, which simply begs the question, why? Why not release a crucial piece of evidence that might solve a three-decade-old case? Without it, the case forever remains cold. Their reasoning seems to be a simple no. Maybe it's laziness, maybe it's negligence. It could even be a disdain and doubt for someone. They had believed once murdered his child. We can't be sure. What do you think, dear viewer? All we know is this. The killer remains at large. An alternative side note, Burke Ramsey. For over 20 years, Burke Ramsey refused to be under the spotlight for any sort of interview. The family stated this was for his protection, to live a normal life. Now, he's an adult. Burke Ramsey has appeared on Dr. Phil, where he was questioned about his sister's death and his proposed involvement in the crime. An interesting video by the Behaviour Panel breaks down Burke's body language, and from what we can see, it doesn't look good for Burke. He consistently has this strange smile. The smile of someone who knows more than he's letting on. Sound familiar? He leans into questions a lot giving the impression that he wants to hear more of the question to refute as much as possible. His parents have been acquitted, meaning the spotlight is no longer on the Ramsey. But who's to say they were looking at the wrong Ramsey? We may never know until the DNA is released by the police. While law enforcement officials have officially stated that the parents are no longer suspects in the murder of John Bennett, that leaves just two conclusions to the Ace Mysteries crew. Either a random assailant with intimate knowledge of the family's finances and home layout broke in and fluffed up a kidnapping, or the parents would do anything to protect their family image, anything. But what do you think, dear viewer? Did we get the right angle or could we have been more acute? If we've piqued your interest with this case, consider liking and subscribing to see more of our content. Thanks for watching, dear viewer. Take care now, or you may end up on one of our videos. Just kidding. Goodbye. <laughs>